Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you are joining us today. Thank you so much for joining 12-Step Roadmap, How to Achieve Accelerator Results. This is Jennifer Bagley, and I appreciate you guys taking time with me today. We just got done with an extended holiday, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. So um, many of you, I'm looking at all of the uh, attendees that are here. Many of you have been attending year over year over year. Some of you are brand new, so welcome to the program. If this is the first time that you're joining, then you definitely want to uh, check out our corporate site, which is 12steproadmap.com. Here's where you can sign up uh, for our monthly newsletters, which also include um, recorded uh, training sessions that you may not have been able to attend live, uh, and also some other powerful information that can help you accelerate your business. So today, as I mentioned, you guys, um, a couple changes have happened on the website, which I want to make you aware of. So we've um, went ahead and archived our 2014 webinars. So you can capture all of last year's webinars here. Our 2015 webinars will all be placed under the primary buckets that we have here, and those buckets will grow. We're adding in some new programs. Uh, that you guys are really going to take an interest in. And then also, um, uh, because of popular demand and because of our sponsors uh, and uh, partner companies, Goodman, Daikin Home Comfort, Daikin 3D, and Amana, uh, we are starting a training program specifically for HVAC contractors, distributors, and manufacturers. So you guys, with that, those are the changes on 12-step roadmap. Let's jump right into business today. And uh, as I said, we're going to do things a little bit, a little bit different. Um, those of you that follow me on Facebook or Twitter probably know that I've spent the last five or six days with my team and my family up in the mountains at uh, one of our team members' cabins, and uh, it was absolutely beautiful. All of our kids were up at the ski slope skiing, and uh, our teenagers, and then the little ones were playing. Uh, of course, by the pond with all the ducks and watching the deer in our front yard. It was absolutely beautiful. But I specifically sat in front of a fireplace in a gorgeous cabin um, for five days writing what uh, I'm almost done with, which is my book. So um, you're going to get to uh, witness and uh, go over a chapter of the book. And of course, none of this has been edited. It's just notes. Um, it's going to go to my editor and publicist, Tammy Kling, uh, here shortly. But I figured that we would go through a couple uh, areas of the book and really dive into those. Now, I have to make this a shorter session today, so we're only going to do 25 minutes, um, but we'll make sure that it's power packed with information. With that being said, uh, it's now 11.05 my time and let's get started. So everything we're going to go through today is regarding getting your house in order. Uh, in every business, there's a few things you own. There's a whole bunch of things that you don't own, um, but there's a few things that you do own that are your greatest visual representation of your business. Uh, we refer to this as your house. So you have other people's houses, you have your house. <laughs> so in this particular training, we're going to spe specifically be talking about your website. Now, let me put things in perspective. Here are your prized possessions that you own. These are your babies, physical assets to your company, things that can appreciate in value. Your website, yourself, your content in the form of video and or text, depending on where it's leveraged, and your website, your website, your website. So, uh, all too often we see companies investing in other companies' assets before they see, we see them taking care of their own house. So I'm going to give you a bunch of different case scenarios, and I'm going to tell you what businesses are doing, and then I'm going to compare it to a real-world example just to kind of put things in perspective. So first, this may consist of getting your business listed on Yelp, uh, jumping directly into social media before your website is uh, properly built, properly designed, properly optimized, has a proper content, has proper video and everything else, right? Uh, this may be um, a yellow page website. Having yellow pages build you a website on their site, but point it to your URL and to line yourself up right next to all your competitors. This may be signing up for Yodel, and Yodel builds you a website, looks nothing like your brand, and they also give you a phone number 
that you that they own. And if you were to leave, they retain ownership of that phone number, but you have permanent listings all over Google with somebody else's phone number attached to your business name. Okay, these sound exciting when you when you start talking, or especially when you get on the phone with a salesperson. It sounds exciting to do these things. However, I want you to really, really think about this. How about a listing on City Search, Urban Spoon, Wedding Wishes, and so on? There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of directory sites, uh, website building companies, free website builders, and everything else. I can't tell you how backwards this is. This literally would be like going home to your family and telling your family, I have an idea. Let's go live in a shed. Because, you know, I'm going to go lease this BMW that costs $900 a month. And we can live in a shed and we'll lease the BMW. How's that for a great investment? So I know I'm being kind of a smart ass and it's my show. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to do for this one. But... Really, if you think about it, if you own your physical website, if you do it right, some people think they own their website, but they don't. Um, but if that is your, your number one sales tool that works for you when you sleep, when you're in other appointments, when you're in meetings, when you're uh, doing installations, when you're in the courtroom, uh, when you're sitting in a client's home, whatever the situation is, if that is your primary sales tool, that is your voice, that is your message, that is you essentially working for you while you're working for the business, then that is going to be the most important physical asset that you have. You also retain um, ownership of it. It's permanent. It has compounding benefits. It provides you with compounding interest gains. Uh, it can increase the overall value of your company. Whereas all of these third party things that you may be spending money on, um, most likely, well, I'm not even going to say most likely, they are not your permanent physical compounding assets that you own. So again, think about that. It would be like my website's kind of like a shed at best, um, maybe a mobile home. I love tiny houses, so I can't even compare it to that. But for, you know, just giving you an example <clears throat> Maybe it looks like an outhouse. You have to be the judge of that. <laughs> but, uh, and you're going to take your hard earned money and you're going to go lease a really expensive car. Nothing against BMWs, just a little bit against leases. Okay. So, another example <clears throat> if you own a template website, you own a template website. So first off, you went and got a cheap, cheap template or you hired a web guy that went and paid 69 bucks for a template for you and then said he developed your website, something like that. <clears throat> and you have your blog on a third-party blogging engine separate from your website. So maybe it's Blogger, uh, maybe it's a WordPress blog, <clears throat> even if it looks like it's on your URL. So essentially what that's called is a masked URL. Um, so you have your website that's on your domain name that is probably static pages. Your blog, which technically is your most powerful engine, you are off on somebody else's uh, main asset, building Blogger or building WordPress and so forth, even if it looks like it's your own, they're separate. So your blog is not actually uh, a physical asset of your website because it's not integrated with it. All right. So in this case, a real world example would be buying a Pinto, i.e. WordPress or excuse me, a website template and renting your friend's house i.e. blogger.com, WordPress's blogging engine as a third party, right? So you own a POS, you can put the acronym however you like, and you're paying down someone else's asset with no equity actually being built for you or your own family. So that would be having a template website, that's your POS or your Pinto, and having your blog on a third-party engine, which is essentially um, you putting your hard-earned dollars in the form of time blogging into somebody else's asset, which is like leasing your friend's house or renting your friend's house. Okay, next case scenario. Still, we're on the topic of keep uh, getting your house in order and keeping your house in order. Next, better yet, hiring a friend 
the guy from your networking group, uh, a local company because they're down the street, to build your own website, <clears throat> or you building your own website, and expecting to compete with professionals. When you go into business, um, I just had a I just had a company that uh, I watched go through the process of. They were with a national SEO agency and they were absolutely killing it. They were doing amazing. Page one, position one, two, three, four, five for uh, result over result over result. And I literally watched their marketing girl uh, make a recommendation to go to a local company so she could quote unquote feel. F E E L, uh, an emotional charge um, that triggered her to pull the plug on a um, a large uh, international marketing agency that had them um, killing results only so that she could feel better about working with somebody that she could sit, sit in a room with and see face to face, even though you can do the same thing on a webinar. So for example, um, anyway, tons and tons. And, and I watched the process entirely go through. Now they don't have any page rank. Um, now a real world example is if you're going to get serious about entering drag races and you're going to jump in and you are going to compete and you decide even after having looked at all of the other cars, the drag race cars, you went out and looked at those drag race cars and you decided that you were going to start off with a homemade soapbox car and you are going to compete. So you want to be very, very careful. If you're serious about your business, do it right. Remember, the cost is not the cost of doing it right. The cost is the difference between the cost of doing it right and the cost or expense of doing it wrong. Can you even calculate the missed opportunities that would happen in any business from not implementing the right marketing plan? The cost of doing it wrong, I promise you, far outweighs the cost of doing it right. Okay, next, here's one of my favorites. Dumping time and money into an effective social media marketing cam campaign while you own a website that is not designed for con conversions. In fact, if you looked at your website yourself, the visual appearance of the website is so bad, unprofessional, not responsive, outdated, 10 years old, old technology, template, theme, you built it yourself, your wife, your son, your neighbor, your cousin, one of your triple Fs, built your site. Your site is so bad that when you look at the analytics on your site, people are actually only on the website for less than a minute when they are a referral from all of your social media work. So if you think about it, and I see this all the time, somebody sits down with a social media marketing agency, the agency tells them why social is this and social is that and social and social and social. And next thing you know, you have some twit trying to teach you how to tweet and your everything on your social media accounts is now supposed to grow your business tenfold. The problem is, is that conversions take place on websites most of the time. So if they are on your Facebook account and you're spending tons of money or you're spending tons of time or resources on posting content to all your social media accounts and doing it right and everything looks good and it's pretty and everything else, they get to your website and bam, ooh, what happened here? Okay, let me give you a real world example. I told you this is going to be a little bit different. All right, the real world example is you're single, 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 and you decide you are going to get on an online dating site. You go on and you decide, you know what? Like many realtors, my headshot, I'm just teasing. I'm totally kidding. That was a joke. But my headshot, you know, it's just really, it's not appealing. So I'm just going to go find a photo of, let's say, a supermodel. And I'm going to post a supermodel on an online dating site, write a gorgeous profile. I'm going to start building digital relationships with people. And then I'm going to ask for an offline meeting. The first time they show up and instantly when they get there, they think your parents could have possibly been Shrek or Medusa. I'm not sure what happened here. But, for example, your social media accounts look like supermodels. Gorgeous. Content is good. It's beautiful. You're doing the right thing. You're posting every day. The content is powerful and engaging and so forth. And then, bam, they go to your website to make a decision if they want to do business with you. And, oh, no. What happened here? Okay. 
All right. Last but not least, this is one of my favorites. Investing in a pay-per-click campaign. Taking your hard-earned money, throwing it at the wall, getting on your knees, crossing your fingers, toes, and everything else, and praying that you're going to get a click-through. That somebody's not just going to see and they're not just going to pay for an impression, but you're going to get a click through. And that somebody is going to be someone that is smart, that's going to ask good questions, that is going to have a budget to be able to do business with you. The same person that's clicking on an ad on the top of Google or on the right hand side of Google instead of in the organic listings that show up on page one. Think very, very carefully. If you are an educated consumer, if you are the kind of consumer you want, I want you to think about when you are out and about and you are searching on for anything, anything, I don't care what it is. If it's a restaurant or a pool installer or a roofer or a painter or a new insurance guy or an attorney or a new car or a new air conditioning unit, if you're online and you're doing research, do you? Doing research for a purchase, not for your marketing campaign, but if you're doing research for a purchase, do you ever click on the pay-per-click ads on the right-hand side or in the top three? So, okay, let's say that, for instance, you have, because a lot of times what I notice, if somebody has once, they'll often tell me, I do that. Now, they've convinced themselves that that's the truth. Really, that's only the truth to them, because if you've only done it once, it's probably not something I would say I actually do. However, we'll roll with it. So, if you were to ask your friends and your family and your clients and your neighbors and your vendors and your strategic partners and your coaches and everyone else, when they're doing research for any types of products or services, where do they click? And if everyone comes to you and they tell you that I would never click an ad unless I was trying to charge my competitor four bucks or something or research some way to market my business that I don't actually do myself. But anyway, we'll roll with it. Uh, if everyone tells you that they search for a specific set of key phrases and they only click within the organic results and you are implementing a pay-per-click campaign, even with that knowledge, it's just, oh, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about that. First of all, however, let's say we're rolling with it. <laughs> so the real world example is simple. You own your own home and you decide to invest in painting and remodeling a guy's house that's six cities away from your own. You go back to your realtor and you tell your realtor what you've done and you hope that it's improved the value of the home you own. But you put your money in a house that's six cities away from you. You don't even know the guy. You don't have any relationship. He's not your family. He's not your kin. However, you want those dollars that you're investing to improve your house. So in all situations, you lose at one, two, three, go. So the bottom line is take care of your business. Is your house in order? This rule applies to your life, your family, and your business. Think about it. If you're investing outside of your family, if you're investing outside of your business, first and foremost, before you take care of your own house, my guess is that's not going to be uh, something that's going to help you leverage uh, leverage your time. All right, we're going to go through. I've got time for one more quick, uh, quick, quick chapter. All right, um, and you guys are getting previews. So we're this. I, I don't remember which number um, we just did, but there's a, this is 101 uh, rules for big business growth. Um, so 19, understanding the what next concept in marketing. Understanding the what's next concept in marketing. When working with your marketing team and vendors, it's important to have a what's next mindset. Tammy and I can look at companies regardless of size, their websites, their social media, their content, their marketing, and we can create a what's next, next list, even if it's a project that we're working on. So really, really think there's not a company out there that we can find that has nothing left to do to impact their bottom line growth. With any project, there's an initial budget, there's a timeline, there's re resources uh, or resource allocation is set. 
with any good strategist, you're going to have to prioritize. My guess is that there is so much that could be done. There is not enough of a budget, a timeline, or the associated resources that is allotted to that particular product that is going to allow you to get everything done that you need to get done in a marketing. Plus, the other thing to consider is that there's predecessors to certain activities. So there are things that have to get done first before you move to the next step. So when you are uh, sitting down on your monthly or quarterly or every other month or annual, or hopefully it's not annual, please say it's not annual, but when you're sitting down for your regular strategy meetings, you need to walk into those meetings with a what's next mindset. And that's going to help you continue to progress and ex achieve accelerated results and growth. All right. You don't get that yet. You don't get that yet. How about last one and we're out of here. So we're talking a lot about taking care of your own house. <clears throat> 23 is first impression in a moment's time. I want you to think if you were training your sales team or your account representatives or yourself to be absolutely prepared for your biggest sales presentation ever. What advice would you give them? So, and you guys can add to this. I'd love to hear feedback. If if you have ideas, I can add to this list before we go into public uh, into publishing. Then please shoot them over to me on social media sites. Okay. So, what advice would you give your sales guy if they're going into? So, some of the things I put down is look good, dress your best, make sure you have your best suit on or your best dress, be prepared, make sure your presentation is top notch in content and visually. Be confident in your knowledge, your presentation, your look, your abilities. Make an impact. Do something different. Use video. Also, leave them with your contact information and make sure that you leave them with what are the next steps that they need to do to be able to take action. So I ask this of you. If your website is the one who's your substitute, right? If your website is your substitute, presenter or your substitute salesperson and it's doing these presentations for you and it's presenting to your best possible prospects your referrals your existing customers why would you not have the same standards as you do for yourself or your sales team or an account executive for your next in line probably that reaches and sees more sales appointments than you, your sales team, and your account team combined. If you have something that represents a salesperson or an account manager or a business owner that is communicating to your prospects on behalf of you, do you have the same criteria? Does it have to? look good and be the absolute best? Does it have to show that you are absolutely knowledgeable and prepared? Does the presentation and the content have to show that you are an expert? Other people trust you. You're knowledgeable. You're relevant. You're current. Are you confident that if you were to take that side and you were to drop it in front of a next prospect and you were not able to attend the conversation, is it going to do what you do for you while you're not there? Do you have yourself, if you are the best salesperson in your company, but your, so, your website happens to be your substitute and working for you, will you go do other things? Do you have a video with yourself on your website so that you get the best of both worlds? Do you get this beautiful, gorgeous, very nicely done, high quality content, top level information, reviews, testimonials, endorsements, look good, feel good, makes you feel good? And it also has you on it. When I go to your site, can I instantly figure out who you are, where you are, what you do, who you serve, and how to reach you? Are you making sure that that substitute salesperson, your website, uh, does that for you? And finally, when somebody goes to your site, no matter where they come in, if they come in on the home page, if they come in on an interior page, are you leaving them with the next steps to take action? Are you helping them to know exactly what to do next? In a sales presentation, you would probably tell uh, one of your salespeople that you wanted a white glove treatment on exactly helping a consumer or a prospect go through the process, and you want them to carry their hand to the next step. You want them to make it as easy as possible to get to the next step in working with you. 
So as you go through your website, every single page of your site, like I said, if you're focused on organic listings, your interior pages, if you're working on SEO, your interior pages are going to be what brings in new business. Your homepage is what closes referral business uh, from other websites, referral business from your clients, your existing clients for upsells, your strategic partner referrals, your vendor referrals, and so forth. So that has they have different missions. But either way, no matter where they come in, do you carefully take them through who you are, what you do, how you do it? Do other people love you? Are you knowledgeable? Are you professional? Do you look professional? Do you look like a company that's been in business? Do you look like a company that I should do business with? Or does it look like you decided to start a business and build your own website? <clears throat> okay. You cannot compete in a drag race with a homemade soap top, soap box car. And you can't expect your best salesperson to perform like you if you don't hold the exact same standards for that salesperson as you would for you. So you guys, with that, I hope this is uh, informational. I'm also doing some little plugs for the book as we uh, finish it up here and get si ex I'm excited, excited, excited uh, to finish this book and bring it to market. But hopefully you guys get an idea of the quality of the content as we go through and I'll leave little snippets with you. Um, only for my 12 step people because you guys are here every week and I greatly appreciate you. Thank you so much for attending today. And uh, if you have any questions, if you have topics, if you've got subjects that you're interested in uh, us going over or me specifically adding into the program, if you've got uh, someone that you think would be an amazing contributor, and I mean amazing, I want the best of the best of the best to the 12-step roadmap program, or if you see an organization that you think would benefit from us customizing a program for them, please do let us know. Next steps for you. Let me make sure I do the same thing. On 12-step roadmap, you guys, uh, anytime, anywhere can visit with us and sign up for a free consultation. You can sign up here. You can sign up on the right-hand side on any of uh, our interior pages. I just want to make sure that you know if you are um, interested in visiting and figuring out how you can achieve achieve accelerated results and greater growth in your business. Uh, that's what we're here for. So.